Hello Munchkins and viewers alike, it's me Munchie bringing you a bag cage review. Welcome on in ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls to the cage reviews for your hamsters, gerbils, and mice. Today I talk about this cage in a negative light because of the points I will be making in this video. For those of you who have this cage, hopefully you will listen to the points being made and see if there's ways you can improve your companion's care. Now we do this all for our companions, we want to understand and appreciate them while also understanding that we should listen when it comes to educational and information that you see people talk about online because not all the time are people just trying to get you riled up but we want you to love and experience your animal in ways to make them and yourself more happy. Today's cage is the KT Critter Trail Z Runabout Habitat. This has been already put together, so it's not gonna be an unboxing and review video, but I want to at least give you guys in the United States a sense of idea of what this cage is for and what are the requirements for your species of animal you may be using this for. So let's start off with just looking at this thing right here. There is a hide lookout, there is the wheel right here. This, yes, this is a wheel. This is not supposed to be a hide, but hamsters have turned it into hides. We will get to that later. There is the main compartment down here with the tubes on both sides, the food bowl in here, and the water bottle that is back here. Let me first by saying that the species this caters to is hamsters, gerbils, and mice. Gerbils chew through plastic and KT is still advertising this cage knowing that gerbils have chewed through and escaped their enclosures. Still advertise for gerbil use. KT, what are you doing? KT, stop it. KT is oblivious. I, I would say that's incorrect because they've actually talked to the pipsqueakery on hamster enclosures and I feel like the pipsqueakery would have also mentioned to them that hey these cages are inappropriate for gerbils. Why do you still label them for gerbils? Do you want people to buy enclosures where their animals escape from it or chew it from distress or chew it because that's what they do. Gerbils are huge chewers. So putting them in something plastic like this, you're gonna get an escapee very quickly. So this is not for gerbils at all. Knock it right off the list. Next, we'll talk about mice because you know you don't really see a lot of people using this other than hamsters, right? So let's talk about how mice can benefit from this. Now, just a single mouse in a cage like this, let's say for instance, a male mouse because they are supposed to be loners because they can uh, get along with anybody else except for if they are neutered then they can go into a female colony but you gotta understand neutering a male mouse not many people do it and it is kind of rare and hard so if you have just one loner male in here I would say this is not the greatest enrichment they don't have a lot of places for them to be able to put their hides and to stack up the bedding and that's what we're gonna talk about later honestly something like this is not going to be appropriate for them unless it is attached to another cage but at the same time why would you be spending so much money on something like this there there's some really good points as to why mice owners do not use uh, enclosures like this but for one mouse the minimum which is at that lower end of the scale because minimum is the lowest highest max is over here and then recommend it's right in the middle a lot of people do not recommend this as a cage but it is noted that one mouse can be in something 200 square inches or more one one single. I went ahead and measured it. So it is 14 length times 9.5 width and I got 133 square inches. So it's actually smaller than a 10 gallon tank, which is about 200 square inches. So this is not even appropriate for one single mouse. So let's talk about hamster species next. Syrians, also known as teddy bear or fancy bear or panda bear hamsters, golden, you name it, they're Syrian hamsters. Them, Chinese hamsters, dwarf, Russian dwarf, or Jungarian winter white hamsters, and Roboroski hamsters. All of these species do not fit in something such as this. They have really big needs that people just do not understand because they travel five to 10 miles a night in the wild and they rely heavily on their large range in territory to find and forage for food and to run around. That is their instinct. They must constantly be running around. Something very small like this is catered towards humans because we don't have a lot of space so that means we can sacrifice their space for our comfort right that's the way this works no no you should really if you want a pet understand their needs so you can cater to them they shouldn't be at your expense of I can't afford it for one or two I just don't have enough space please don't get an animal that requires a lot of time training and space that happens a lot with dogs especially when people don't understand for instance huskies need a lot of extensive training a lot of extensive time and need to constantly be moving and 
getting their energy out. So it's the same concept as if you don't give them what they need, you're not gonna get a well-behaved animal or you're not gonna get an animal that is relaxed because they're in something like this. So hamsters in the United States have a minimum of 450 square inches of floor space. 133 versus 450. It doesn't seem like a big difference, but it is, especially when it comes to the height and the pan depth. This right here is only about two inches of pan depth before it starts overflowing the wires here. And that's not good for burrowing animals. So gerbils, let's go back to gerbils even though we deem this cage inappropriate because they chew through plastic and can't escape from it. Gerbils need a lot of bedding, like eight to 12 inches worth of bedding at recommended. And at minimum, it's around like five to six, but they need it because they spend the majority of their time more so than hamsters in their burrows, making tunnels and foraging and just having a ball in a burrow-like setting. So if you get a tank, which is appropriate for them, pile up that bedding, watch them go through. It's just like an ant farm. You see the ants in their little tunnels going through. It's like that, except for ant farms the smaller ones are not so appropriate, I've been told. So I just wanna say that you see them doing their thing in an environment that is natural to them. This is not natural to them, not plastic things like this, not when it cannot provide enough pan depth. So for mice, mice really do like to burrow and they really should be around the same type of depth such as hamsters. So hamsters, the recommended is five to six inches, minimum is three inches, all right guys? So recommended, five to six. You can't fit that much bedding in here and they need that to maintain their core body temperatures to keep themselves warm in the winter time. Hamsters are very funny. They will either pile the bedding and they sleep under it or they'll be on top of the bedding all nice and cool just because they're trying to maintain their body temperature. So bedding is most needed in enclosures. Give them as much as they need. Next, let's talk about wheels because wheels are very important. So this one right here, goodness, I did not even measure it because it's a sphere. It's a sphere wheel. It's very odd. It's very weird. And if you hear that, it's noisy. It feels like it needs oiling because it's very hard to turn this. I have to kind of give it a woof for it to even go. So this is of course used and there is some defaults about this cage here, but it is used but in newer condition because it wasn't used for that long. So it's really hard to measure this, but I'm gonna try. It looks like it most likely is around five and a half inches starting from here because that's kind of where it is ending over here. So it's about five and a half to six inches. This is not good for gerbils with long tails. Mice with long tails, especially adult mice, you don't want their tails to get caught, especially in slits like this. And you definitely for Syrian and dwarf hamsters need something well above that, Syrian hamster should have anywhere from 10 to 12 inches because they're huge creatures. You don't want their backs to start curving and their heads going up running like this. My neck hurts right now just from trying to demonstrate to you how discomforting it is. It could cause discomfort, inflammation, you can have spine damage and them just not using what is meant to be the way they achieve their exercise because of their instinct to forage for those five to 10 miles a night. This right here is just too tiny, too, too, too tiny. And I picked it up because it's too tiny and it comes off so easily. Oh my gosh, I don't like that. <laughs> this cage has so many issues with it. Ah! But this right here is not good even for dwarf hamsters, which they really should be for most species of dwarf hamsters, the winter whites and the Russian dwarfs should at least have an eight inch wheel. And for Robo Roskies, they are the smallest hamster that you can own. And yes, they can fit in a 6.5 inch wheel, but some Robo Roskies have been known to get big. So anywhere from a 6.5 onward is okay, but you should be monitoring how they run. They should be running completely straight with their backs. They should not be arching up. They shouldn't be looking up. They shouldn't have a curved back. They should be completely straight. So that's how you can tell if your animal is in discomfort or if they are running naturally fine on their wheel. Let's talk about the lookout here. So this is classified as possibly a hide versus the ball because people have said the ball has actually become a hide to most animals. Because if you notice, which looks bigger to you when it comes to the amount of space that an animal can have to make a nest or a burrow? This one does. So a lot of the times, the flaw for this cage is that hamsters will want to sleep in the wheel compartment and that completely deems the wheel inaccessible and you have to take it apart to clean it. That is the hardest part. What's worse about this wheel is people have complained that a hamster escapes from this wheel or this wheel completely breaks down. Let me just see if I can take it off real quickly. You gotta take it off like that. This part right here, oh my gosh, just keeps coming off. It doesn't really lock on and that's the problem. The material for this enclosure is the biggest flaw because it breaks. You see that? A hamster can easily push that up because this part here, the plastic part, is supposed to latch 
is broken because when you push it to lift up, it snapped right here, broken, right there. A little part. So anytime your hamster, especially Syrian hamsters, because a lot of people keep Syrians in this and it's torturous, really it is, when you look at that massive hamster being in something like this. They push it up and they're free and they can go run around your bedroom until you wake up and you find them in a place they should not be in. For this, you would have to take all the bedding out, but the good part about this is that you can easily take it apart, right? Ugh, plastic pieces always are agonizing to rip apart and to disassemble and reassemble for cleanings. Another reason why you probably don't want for you or maybe for your family member to have a cage like this is because you're not gonna want to clean it. I'm trying to take this damn ball off, sorry. It's not a twist, it's literally a pull and I'm, ow, I'm pinching my fingertips. Oh my gosh, come on. Katie, this is hard. Oh, curse you, get off. Exercise balls are easier to take apart than this. Oh my gosh. You know what, I'm not gonna even try. <laughs> oh, let's just put it back because I can't even try. It hurts, it hurts too much. I think I would hurt myself or break a nail and my nails are actually growing pretty okay right now. I don't want a broken nail. It feels horrible when you do. The materials really suck, especially when everything is the same quality or the same material. It is just heartening. Instead of getting a cage that's very simple and it's open and it's tall and you can easily just take the wire part off and take the pan off to clean inside the pan here, right here, you have to disassemble everything a specific way and that makes cleaning it hard. Your hamster is probably going to have so much bedding up here or in here or maybe it urinates in the tubes here. These tubes are very hard plastic tubes so when you go to clean them, good luck trying to take them apart like I tried to with the ball here. That is hard to take off. I mean it's a little bit easier for the tubes because I've done it before. I do still use KD tubes for dwarf hamsters inside of another enclosure. Just in, literally inside of it on the floor so they can make their own tunnel system. Have Having it like this, they have to climb up and down this, and it's uncomfortable. If you notice that small space right here at the ball, how can a Syrian even get inside of here? That is impossible, or they get stuck, or they just have one hell of a time trying to get up and down this, because these tubes are so tight for Syrians, for even the fattest of the dwarf hamsters, and dwarf hamsters have smaller, rounder bodies. Syrians at least can climb dwarf hamsters they have smaller built-in bodies and so they won't be able to climb as well so the design of the whole kt cages is really useless you can't see them crawl up there but have you noticed they're struggling a little or they're hesitant to get up there there's good reason for that i, I want to take this apart real quick even though you saw how pretty i set it up right i'm going to take this apart to make a point here and then I'm gonna put this back together. Oof, look at that incline. If my hamster were to go up it, be at the top, and then wanna get back down, they're going to, for a while, not go down it. You will see them bobbing their head down, not liking that motion of potentially falling and not going down until they're forced to do something uncomfortably. Because going up, it's completely fine to them, but going back down, that even with the rings inside of it, that actually make this tube a lot smaller from the inside than you see on the outside. It is such a claustrophobic mess. And even though they do have burrows, they have burrows that they're able to comfortably move in and out of. So having something that's just designed like this is horrible to them especially with that drop, you could hurt your hamster. And I've seen horror stories of hamsters' toes or feet getting ripped off or pinched or dislocated because of really tight fits like this. This is a health hazard. This whole cage and the cage design from KT Critter, Critter Trails is awful. Let me discuss even further about just the inside of this and the wire here. This wire can easily bend and I actually had to bend it back. Let me see, is it in the back here? Which wire piece? Actually, is it you? Is it you? Is it you? I had to bend one of these. Anyways, I'm losing pieces here, but it's okay because <laughs> it's fine. The wire here is one of the biggest concerns because it's caused a lot of deaths in hamsters. When you accidentally bend one of these bars, it's either easy to bend it back, but it looks a little disshapen, or it's extremely hard to. It's just, it's not right that we're still using designs from the 80s and 90s when research in the early 2000s state smaller enclosures actually can cause stress and discomfort 
and problems with hamsters. So I can link those articles down below too as well because there's two of them. There's one about uh, hamsters being in four different size enclosures and one about measuring core body temperatures to determine stress. Hamsters, if they find a bent part, they will try to go through it. There has been a lot of, and specifically a lot of dwarf hamster deaths where they go through the bars, they can't get back, they accidentally cut off their own air and then they end up passing. Yes, I, I know, this is sad when you hear it from me, but seeing reviews online, hearing people talk about it, hearing a customer, a past customer, where I used to work at a pet store, their cousin's hamster ended up hanging themselves from the two-tier KT Critter Trail cage because they were trying to escape was just awful. The way you open up is just from this compartment here, or the lookout tower, which you saw me opening up, but the problem here is you have a small opening. I'm trying to get you to come out here. I only have this movement right here where I'm like trying to get you and it's not a good idea for a cage such as the size to just grab them with one hand you're gonna get bit or you're gonna have them screaming bloody murder at you something you do not want to have happen you want a relaxed calm hamster that you can easily scoop up take out and handle something like this when a beginner starts off with a cage like this is very sad to see when you're trying to interact with a very young baby hamster because you most likely got them from a pet store where they end up coming in at two months of age or younger sometimes. It's insane how young they are. This is online around $50. On Amazon right now, it is on sale for $44.99 at, I think PetSmart, I saw it on their shelf at $49.99 as well. It's just not a cage you wanna be grabbing. It just, it appeals to kids because it looks cool. It looks like a toy, but to an animal that's supposed to have their whole life be in this cage, it's not. And the critter trails are supposed to Expand. So you're gonna be using the same type of tubes from one cage to another if you were to expand this and you're getting the same height. Searing hamsters, they need bigger wheels and they need bigger hides that you manually place inside of here because it doesn't really come with any hides except for the lookout, which of course I again, so you wanna add your own hides and you wanna make sure you add enough. And the heights, you can't add the appropriate size Syrian wheel. I wish people would look further into this and that's why I'm here making these videos so you guys can understand why these are really bad. When you attach to another cage, you're paying another, what, 30, 40, $50 for another cage that's the exact same style, except for maybe it's in a different color. And maybe it comes with one different type of hide or maybe one different type of wheel. It's not going to improve much because you're still using the same materials that can easily break. Break, break, break. This plastic here has chipped and cracked horribly. I've had cages where at my rescue, since I run and operate a small animal rescue, they end up coming in with broken enclosures saying, hey, my hamster keeps escaping from this and I just can't have an animal that keeps escaping when I have other animals in the house. And there's been rescues, like for instance, where this cage came from, where the owner literally had to duct tape a cage. You should not, if you have an enclosure that you have to use duct tape for, be using Using that cage. That cage is not secure. That is definitely a safety hazard. Material sucks. Everything about this sucks. The size of this sucks. Let's go put a hamster in it. So I only have Syrian hamsters at this rescue, but the majority of owners on reviews say this cage is for Syrian hamsters. And there are people out there that will say, no, 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 no. You're, you're making points about Syrians only, but dwarf hamsters can definitely fit in these. Yes, like I did mention, dwarfs, they can easily fit in these tubes. The risk of the materials and the bending of the bars and just the space in general is not good for them. Also, you're spending way too much money on an enclosure like this when you could spend it on an appropriate size enclosure, a one and done deal. All you have to do is just add accessories, bedding, hides, climbing, toys. That's all you have to do. Wheels even. You have to just at least add that stuff to a cage that's at least big enough to have their needs be met and addressed. So to end this video off, I just want to show a comparison of an appropriate cage. This is a preview Hendrix 528 cage that's mainly sold on Amazon. It is 608 to 612 square inches. Hi there, Belle. But this is her current setup right now. She has an 11 inch wheel that you can see right in the corner here. This just as big as the tiny cage you see above you that we are reviewing today. And, well, oh, hi there. You just wanna be my presence, huh? She's a climber, so she really does like climbing and that's why she's in a pre uh, preview 528 cage. I got some ledges in here. I got some bigger toys. Cause you see that toy right there? That is pretty high in height and that would not be able to fit inside of here. Neither would the wheel size. Let me just open this up so it makes it a little easier for you to at least see the wheel and see the height here. These are accessories that have been purchased separately from the cage because as you see, the cage is only wire 
and a pan. And that's really all you need. If you have the space, you can add more to it as time goes on. There's two doors and this door is huge as you see here, very huge. Versus a tiny little door, such as this one. And they're around the same price. This is $50, this is $70. Wow, that's only a $20 difference in quality and price. And these cages I've had for years, none of them have broken, none of them, because all it is is wire and pan, and that's it. Now, gerbils will not be able to use this cage. Mice, however, can. Dwarf hamsters can. Roboroskis can. Syrian hamsters can. Chinese hamsters can. But she has so much activities to do inside of this cage. It's just a good investment. But we should really be using enclosures such as these in today's society. It's 2020, there really is no need to be using these cages anymore. It's all a gimmick by KT. Yes, companies can make good hamster products. They don't necessarily need to make good hamster cages if they are selling like hotcakes. They break easily. Parents have complained about hamsters escaping. It's not good, but they still produce them because it's an easy profit for them and they force you to attach more and more and more accessories and cages if you feel like your hamster isn't getting enough. And they are aware of it. KT is aware of this problem of the animals needing more, but they do always say on their websites, it's your responsibility to get them what they need. This cage might be good for a temporary enclosure to clean out your bigger enclosure with, or it will be good for a traveling carrier. I would not recommend this specific make and model because KT has made simpler models that don't come with the wheel or this big attachment here. It's just the base. It's just a basic starter cage as they call it. Those cages are really good for carriers. They are not really good for main closures. So that is my point I want to make today. And that's why this is a bad cage review. Besides all of these reviews that I see on Amazon stating how horrible these cages are. And these are recent reviews. These are reviews that people might not have seen a video such as mine or might not have seen other reviewers saying how bad this cage is and bought it based on what it looks like. But not understanding that people are saying this cage is a disaster, but you're head goes, but it's a pretty cage, you know, especially since this cage right here is gray and black. I want to go with a prettier looking cage, but then that's how you get duped. So thanks guys. And if you enjoyed today's video, hit like to show support, comment down below with anything you'd like to say. If you do own this cage, I really hope that this has encouraged you to look elsewhere. There are some great hamster groups on Facebook if you are a part of Facebook and they do have files and photos there of appropriate size enclosures. You can also check out other YouTubers as well as my own channel for more information about proper hamster care. Thank you guys and I hope you will enjoy future videos from me and become a part of the Munchkin family by subscribing. I'll see you around in another video. Bye-bye!